I've spent the last three months on the Dexcom G7, and here is my review. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea, I have lived with type 1 diabetes for over 20 years, and this is just a channel all about that. Some tips, some tricks, some reviews, and that is what we have for you today. I've been on the Dexcom G6 for the last approximately four years, so some of this is going to be a light compare and contrast because I have that so distinctly to compare to, but first I wanna talk about what is the same. What has not changed between these two devices? It remains with the XCOM G7 that it is a no calibration, no finger stick unit, although you can calibrate manually if you really need to. It also remains that it is a 10 day wear time. I know a lot of people were hoping that this wear time was going to be elongated. It is not, sadly. And that, funnily enough, is kind of where the similarities end. So first off, when you come to insert the device, you are gonna see that the device is now an all-in-one system. This is Dexcom's first all-in-one sensor system. This is certainly a difference between the Dexcom G6 and G7. The G6 had a separate transmitter that had to be changed approximately every three months. With the G7, that is no more. The next thing you're gonna notice is the size. The Dexcom G7 is 60% smaller than the Dexcom G6. And the shape of the Dexcom G7 is a lot more circular, and it is a whole lot thinner. So for all my ladies out there with the tight skirts or jeans or whatever, you're gonna be able to hide it just fine. Next up, let's talk about the warm-up period. The warm-up period has been shortened from two hours to 30 minutes. So this means you only have to wait 30 minutes rather than the previous two hours on the Dexcom G6. When you insert that sensor, that 30 minute countdown begins. Why this is so groundbreaking is that it can start warming up whilst you still have your old sensor on. Meaning that if you time it right at least 30 minutes prior to your old sensor expiring, you are going to get continuous readings without having to wait at all. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes on the G6, uh, those two hours were tough. This continuous or ability to have continuous readings is huge, huge. Another new feature that the Dexcom G7 gives you is a 12 hour grace period. This means your sensor essentially can last you 10 days plus 12 hours. And that 12 hours is meant to give you the opportunity to change your device when it's convenient for you. So you're gonna get the alerts when that 10 day wear is coming to an end. And then you're going to get this 12 hour countdown, which allows you to change your sensor any time within those 12 hours and allows you to start a new sensor also within those 12 hours, get that 30 minute warm up out of the way while you've still got data from your first one and it's seamless. I've really come to appreciate this 12 hour grace period because there are times when it is just not convenient to change your sensor. You might be at work, you might be in the middle of a meeting, you might be caring for your children, you might be traveling. Heck, you might have a time difference and then that 10 day wear ends up, you know, expiring at, I don't know, three in the morning. Nobody wants to get up at three in the morning and change your sensor. No. So though it might not seem like a big deal when I say it out loud, oh, you get a 12 hour grace period, great, 12 hours extra. That's what some people might be thinking. Actually, when you put it into practice, it makes the user experience so, so, so much more friendly and less obtrusive to your life and your day on those sensor change days. And speaking of making the user experience far more friendly, this very much works with the app. The app has become a far more information rich database for you. Whereas before with the Dexcom G6, you would have to go to a separate app called Clarity to get kind of all your analytics, things you would share with your doctor, information you would get about common times you were going low, for example, all of that stuff. That now is baked into the very same app that you're gonna get your readings from. Also within the app, you can create a whole custom second profile of alerts. So maybe you want a profile for when you go on vacation. It's different to when you're in your usual work week. Or maybe you want a profile that has a little more give in certain times, weekends for example, and a little bit more 
tight kind of alert profile for during the week or you know, you name it. And carrying on from that ability to personalize things, you now have an ability to quiet everything for up to six hours. And yes, that even includes the urgent low alarm. So when you access that quiet mode, it is going to silence absolutely all alarms for the next however many hours up to six that you would like. That means no sounds, that means no vibrations, and that means, again, no urgent low or urgent low soon alarms. Now talking about that private aspect of maybe not wanting to shout to the world that you have type one diabetes and you're wearing a CGM, and your blood sugar is burp, burp, burp. You can now go into a movie or go to the theater or go to a job interview and be able to know for certain those alarms are not going to disrupt you and you can just do you without the whole blaring alarm possibility fear thing. I hate to admit this, but there were times with the G6, because this wasn't an option on the G6, that I would actually just disconnect the Bluetooth or turn my phone off. I'm not proud of that, but at the same time, there are times when I wanted to know for certain that those sounds were not gonna disrupt what I was doing. Though some people might think, whoa, 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 but what about the alarms? What if you don't get the alarms? You don't have to use this quiet mode, but if you do want that time to have absolutely no alarms disrupt your day, your person, your nada, I think quiet mode is awesome. It puts that control piece back into the user's hands which though I don't think is necessary for every single aspect of a CGM, I do think it's in incredibly empowering. And anytime we can empower diabetics to have data or not have data or be able to proceed with their lives and have the data, but not fear that it's going to disrupt their lives, embarrass them, what have you, I think this is great. And a word about accuracy, yeah. It's more accurate. They have actually tested over 600 patients that the lag time is approximately 3.5 minutes. I do not have a figure of what that was before on the G6, but I can certainly tell you from a user experience, you feel that tightened up lag time. I've seen the way things affect my blood sugar far more quickly. So anytime you can tighten up that lag time and get more accuracy and more real time information, that is powerful. Now my G6 was accurate before, my G7 just seems to be even tighter in terms of that accuracy. The insertion process remains pretty much the same. I always say if you can stick a sticker on yourself and press a button, you can do this. And it's the exact same pretty much as the G6, but everything is far more smaller, so there's less waste, which we love. There was no pain on insertion, and dare I say it, it felt even less painful than the G6, and I wouldn't call the G6 painful in the slightest. It just felt like even less of an awareness of something being introduced into the body. I never had a problem with my G7 staying on, especially because of the smaller profile. I found it was getting caught less because it was so slim and more close to the body. But I know we're not all the same in that regard and Dexcom knows that too. And so to address that, they are including an overpatch in each package with the sensor. And again, I haven't had any issues with the sensor coming off, but I did try the overpatch with several of the sensors and worked a treat. A note on integration, as you probably know, the Dexcom G6 is able to integrate with a whole ton of insulin pumps and those ecosystems. And even with the Tandem T Slim, Omnipod 5, the Dexcom G6 links in with their kind of basal IQ semi-closed loop systems. The Dexcom G7 isn't quite there yet, and it isn't there yet because it's just been released. Upon publishing this video, the Dexcom G7 has just been released in the UK. So everything else is going to roll out probably soon thereafter, I can't say. But usually once a product is rolled out, those companies are pretty quick on the draw to get that system integrated into their ecosystem. But I can't speak for how much time exactly that's gonna take. So what do you say? 
Is it worth it to switch from the Dexcom G6 to the G7? Let me know, what are your thoughts? Comment down below. Do I think that the Dexcom G6 is like ready to just be thrown by the wayside? Oh my gosh, absolutely not. I still think it's a fantastic system and maybe, though I don't know, maybe with the introduction of the G7, the G6 will fall in price, be more easy to get. I don't know. I don't know quite how these things work, but I do think that it's great to have the G6 on the market so readily available, so accurate, so wonderful, and it's also exciting to have the G7 now on the market and driving the technology forward. Any new system, any forward movement in the development of accuracy and user friendliness is great for us diabetics. So that's my sort of two cents. You certainly don't have to switch, but would it be worth it if you could? Yeah, I would say so. And with that being said, I wish you a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you great blood sugars, straight CGM lines, all of that good stuff. But most, most, most importantly, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.